Hello everyone, in this part of the video, we are going to discuss the jackknot method. The jackknot method is another resampling method for estimating bias and estimating standard error. A jackknot is like a leave one out type of cross-validation. A jackknot could be considered a special case of cross-validation because it is primarily used to estimate bias and the standard error of an estimator. So let x be an observed random sample and define the i-th jackknot sample x subscript i be the subset of the x that leaves out the i-th observation xi. So the jackknot sample xi would be x1 all the way to x i minus 1, leaving out xi, then from xi plus 1 all the way to xn. If theta hat equals tn of x, define the i jackknot replicate, theta hat i would be uh, 10, will be tn minus 1 of xi. The subscript n minus 1 is caused by the one observation left out. So here, tn is a function. It could be a mean, it could be a standard deviation, etc. Remember, we want to use the jackknot method to estimate bias and standard error of an estimator. In order to do this, we need to have a smooth plug-in statistic. Otherwise, the jackknot method would fail. Suppose the parameter theta equals t of f is a function of the distribution f. Let fn be the ECDF, that is, the empirical cumulative distribution function of a random sample from the distribution f. Then the plug-in estimate of theta is theta hat equals to t of fn. A plug-in uh, theta hat is smooth in the sense that small changes in the data correspond to small changes in the theta hat. For instance, the sample mean is the plug-in estimate for the population mean, but the sample median is not a plug-in estimate for the population median because it is not smooth. A small change in the data could result in a big change in the sample median. If theta hat is a smooth plug-in statistic, then we can apply the jackknot method to estimate bias. If we have the i's jackknot replicate theta i hat, then the jackknot estimate of bias is n minus 1 times the difference of these two parts. The first part being the mean of the estimates from the lead one out samples. And the second part is the is just the estimate computed from the original observed sample. Um, so let's take a look at an example in R. So first of all, there is a simple way in R that we can leave out the i's element of a vec vector. Here is the code. For example, we have a vector which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Inside this for loop, we use this square bracket to leave out to leave out the i's element. So after we execute this line, the output would be this. Notice that the for loop prints out five lines. For the first line, the first element is gone. For the second line, the second element is gone, and so on. So this is how we do leave one out in R. We have learned how to code the jackknife sample now let's continue to use R code to estimate bias using jackknife. And uh, so here we're going to work with a data set called patch. It, so um, here is the printout of the data set. The patch data contains uh, measurements of a certain hormone in the bloodstream of eight subjects after wearing a medical patch. The parameter of interest 
here is theta, which is uh, y divided by z in our case. And uh, y is the difference of the mean of new patch and the old patch. z is the difference of the mean of the old patch and the mean of the placebo. So um, you yeah, remember that's the formula. So this for this uh, line of code, here n is the number of replications to estimate the bias. It is just the number of the rows in the data. In our case, it is eight. So JackNap only requires n replicates, n replications to estimate the bias whereas the bootstrap estimate of bias typically requires several hundred to thousand replicates. That's one of the big differences between the two resampling method. For this part of the code, we get theta hat. That is the estimate computed from the original observed sample corresponding to this part of the formula. So if we print out theta hat, we would get uh, negative 0.0713. Then we compute uh, the jacknap replicates. So here we are going to have a vector of size n, the row number of the data, which is 8, and the list vector named theta jack is going to hold a series of thetas, which is the parameter of interest. Now, after we get n quotients after the for loop, what we, really, what we really need in the formula is the mean of all, the, all of these quotients, as you can see here. So that's um, the formula we code, uh, we would code in R is, the mean theta hat corresponding to this part of the formula and the theta hat corresponding to this part of the formula. Uh, now we get everything we need to compute the jacknav estimate of bias and then the result is 0 0.008. The other important application for the jacknap method is to estimate standard error. So let's get familiar with the formula first. A jacknap estimate of standard error is n minus 1 divided by n and times the sum of the square difference of jacknap replicate and the mean of this uh, jacknap replica, uh, replicates. And in the end, put everything uh, inside the square root. After rewriting the formula into this format, uh, we can see this part is the mean of the square difference. So in our R code, we have two means. This inner mean is for this part, which is the mean of estimates from the jacknap samples. And uh, this mean is for the sum divided by n. Since we have left one element out, naturally here is n minus 1. So after we execute our code, we have the output, uh, which prints out 0 0.1055. It is worth noting that the jacknap can fail when the statistic is not smooth. Remember we have mentioned earlier that the statistic is a function of the data. Smoothness means that small changes in the data correspond to small changes in the statistic. The median is an example of a statistic that is not smooth. So let's demonstrate in R that if we use jacknap method to estimate median, um, it's not going to work. So we have the R code here. The goal is to estimate the standard error of the median of a sample and show that jacknap method does not work. 
if we execute the first two lines here, we will randomly get a data set from 10 integers from 1 to 100. Then we use jacknot method to estimate standard error of the median, just like uh, the code we went through earlier. And um, we get uh, standard error. Uh, the output is 1.5. If we use the uh, bootstrap method to estimate the standard error of mean of median, you will see the result is uh, way off. The result is uh, 15.955. So clearly something is wrong here. The two estimates are far apart. The jacknot fails because the median is not smooth. So that's all for the jacknot method. In the following part, we're going to introduce a method that combines bootstrap and jacknot together. Thank you for your attention.